Point of View, designed to explore the ideas of others in the community in which we live. Point of View is produced by the Channel 11 Public Affairs Department. And now your host, Durwood Rao. Well, they don't make cartoons like they used to. I can tell you that for sure. Soap opera has come full cycle because now it's in animation. Uh, we're going to be talking about animation, cartoons, soap operas, Robotech. Let's take a look at a film clip from Robotech and then we'll meet one of its creators and mentors. My guest today created the storyline for Robotech. He's producer of Robotech, the television series, and director and writer of Robotech, the movie, which you don't know anything about yet, but will in a very short period of time. Let me introduce to you Carl Masick, who does all of these things for Robotech. And Carl, welcome to the show. Hi. Robotech is very, very unusual. It's not your standard cartoon fair as we know it today. How did you get involved in it? Well, um, Harmony Gold is the company that uh, initially uh, uh, instigated the Robotech concept, and they um, hired me to see if I could do something a little bit different mm -hmm. for uh, television syndication. They wanted a program that would be completely unlike anything that had been on television for animation in the past. And um, with uh, those rules, uh, and with the help of uh, a lot of people at uh, Harmony Gold and in Japan, mm -hmm. we came up with Robotech. The difference in Robotech and most other, if not indeed all other, cartoon series is really worldwide. You know, there's just a, a, a great gap between them. Uh, what, what are the major differences, though, the things that you and I would probably immediately say, hey, that's different? Robotech, for example, um, deals with genuine emotional storyline uh, content that is atypical of cartoons. You have uh, characters that uh, meet and fall in love and have children and basically grow up on uh, television in a dramatic setting as opposed to a situation comedy mm -hmm. setting. Uh, you have uh, a genuine use of, uh, of uh, dramatic storylines that are like um, science fiction as opposed to uh, juvenile fantasy. There are uh, 30 or 40 main characters that interact like a soap opera, like Dallas or... Uh, I was going to mention, you once referred to Robotech as the Dallas of the space age. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, a good comparison because it is a, um, a saga that covers uh, families uh, and their relationships uh, to power and the, the whole uh, substructure of what makes soap opera uh, function. And uh, it wasn't actually me that said that, it was like people describing it, and I've since uh, had to agree with them that it is uh, an animated, quote-unquote, Dallas. Is it done in serial form? I, I, that's the sense that I get. Uh, is the, the episode, each episode, uh, does it build on the previous episode? Oh, absolutely. It's a, um, it's a continuing story so that... Um, if you sit down and start watching episode one of Robotech, uh, by the time you've watched the 85 episodes that have been produced as of this time, you would have a continuous story, 42 and a half hours worth of uh, storytelling that deal with three generations of uh, Earth families trying to uh, save their planet uh, uh, from alien domination. And it all interrelates, and everybody uh, has a history, which uh, is, uh, is very there unique. You said there are 40-some-odd characters. Are there central characters that you can almost count on being in every episode? Uh, for each generation that you deal with, yeah, uh, there's a, probably a handful, let's say six, that you can identify with, both male and female characters, both good guys and bad guys, so that there's a, a good mix, and you can see people develop, and you can see people learn about their environment, uh, both... Uh, uh, you know, interpersonal relationships and the, the big picture, you know, the, the cosmic picture. One of the things that really sets Robotech apart from your average cartoon is your target audience. Who are you aiming at? Well, we have a philosophy at Harmony Gold which um, deals with trying to elevate the level of uh, animation content so that we're shooting for a young teenager with the understanding that you can always have information filtered down to the younger brother or the younger child uh, that is in the viewing audience. But if you can uh, force someone to uh, reach up to your concepts, we think it's much more effective than having stuff splash uh, 
you know, into somebody's mind. I mean, it's a, it's a process of trying to teach people something different. Do you have any idea what the demographics on the show are? Uh, I find uh, that uh, the demographics are fairly heavy from, let's say, 10 to uh, 20, you know, in that hmm. range. So that, uh, as opposed to most cartoons where they have a heavy, you know, juvenile base, which would be the 2 to 8 or something like that. The animation itself, uh, for those of us who grew up watching Walt Disney and uh, Walter Lanz and, mm. and, and folks like that, I is your approach to animation any different than what they do? The technique, of, the, the technique of animation cannot change. I mean, it is a, a technique which is universal. You paint on a transparent uh, piece of uh, acetate and you put that on a background and you photograph it. That technique is... In the, the same. overlay technique yes, is going to remain. Absolutely. Right? But what is different about what we do is the directorial style that we utilize to produce the animation. Um, how you position the camera, how you manipulate the cell and the background, that is what I think makes yeah. the material unique because taken uh, uh, as a separate cell, there's no difference between a cell from Robotech right. And a Disney You're cell. You're using that term cell, and most of us okay. who are laymen don't really know what a cell is, but th this is a. This a is a cell in background. This is yeah. the cell. It's a transparent mm -hmm. piece of film that is placed over a gouache painted background, which is opaque, and then photographed. And they generally do uh, 12 to 24 of these per second, mm -hmm. depending uh, on. One of the things that you pointed out to me in the pre interview was the fact that. One of the things that set, uh, one of the many things that sets Robotech apart is the use of color. Oh, yes. Uh, we find that um, most people don't think about it, but uh, when you look at cartoons, uh, the Smurfs or uh, He-Man or uh, Scooby-Doo or whatever, uh, the color scheme is fairly monochromatic and there's not a lot of color in it. In our particular animation, we strive for maximum use of color uh, per uh, cell. And, uh, for example, this particular cell has maybe 15 different color variations on it, which gives it a more realistic point of view. There's shadows and highlights, which you don't see in most cartoons. And I think that gives it a sense uh, of uh, separate uh, uniqueness. Uh, well, one of the things that uh, Robotech has is the fact that it is animated in Japan. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a particular reason why it's being done in Japan? Well. Uh, Japanese uh, animation industry is geared up to um, produce animation uh, at the speed in which we consume it in the United States. Uh, for example, if you have to produce 85 half hours of television, which is what Robotech is, mm -hmm. that's a considerable amount of animation. And uh, in order to do that, the only place that is geared up to produce that type of animation is Japan. Uh, no other no other country can accommodate. So logically, that's where you would go. Absolutely. Uh, what's new in the way of Robotech? Well, the newest thing right now is Robotech the movie, which is uh, going to be opening in the Dallas Metroplex uh, mm -hmm. area You're right. uh, the 25th of uh, July. And uh, it is a unique product because it, um, it draws its inspiration from the Robotech series, mm -hmm. but it is an all-new story. It's a different storyline entirely mm -hmm. from the 85. That, mm -hmm. that it's an, it's an untold know. story. What, uh, is is it, a, again, a continuation, a, an amplification? It's an amplification of elements which were hinted at in the Robotech series, but were never fully developed. So what we've done is we've taken an incident and we've placed it three days before a particular episode in the Robotech series, and we've turned it into a feature film. And the world premiere I believe. This is the world premiere oh, yes. July 25th in mm -hmm. the Metroplex. Where will it be? It'll be in approximately 25 theaters throughout the, the Metroplex area. As far north as I think Denton, uh, Fort Worth, Dallas, uh, Plano, Irving. I don't so know all the So it literally is going to blanket the Metroplex. Yeah, it is going to be uh, you know, fairly represented in the Metroplex area. What is your role as producer in the movie. You know, we hear that term a lot. What is a producer? That's a very hard thing to describe. <laughs> what uh, we do when we produce television is we make sure that uh, all the elements come together correctly. Uh, the story makes sense. Uh, there's continuity. The man that's going to be painting the cells is uh, doing his work. Uh, the music comes together. 
the recording of the actors happens. The remix uh, takes place. Foley, which is a, a creation of sound effects. Because when you have a cartoon, but if you make a movie and someone walks into the kitchen and gets himself a glass of water, I mean, that sound is real and it's yeah. there and you hear the faucet turning. Well, in a cartoon, if you have someone do that same uh, movement, there's no sound. I mean, it's all on paper, you know, so somebody has to create the sound of someone walking across the room, turning the tap, et cetera, et cetera. So there's all of these little elements that you don't really think about when you're making a cartoon that all have to be integrated. Well, you put it all together, actually. You're, you're the glue. Kind of sort of. It's not just me. There's a whole organization sure. that uh, I have, uh, the, that I fall back on, and uh, I have a co-producer, Ahmed Agrama, who uh, handles most of the technical elements of uh, the production, mm -hmm. making sure that uh, the concepts that I'm thinking about are translated correctly to film and uh, sound, and then I just try to deal with the creative elements so that I can uh, be free to think about stuff like that. Why was the Metroplex chosen for the premiere? Well, for two reasons. One is uh, because uh, we feel at Harmony Gold and at Canon Films is releasing the, the feature that the Dallas Metroplex area is representative of America uh, in terms of its demographics and its... Uh, uh, Pretty good cross-section. Yeah, cross-section, exactly. Yeah. And two, uh, traditionally, Robotech has been uh, well-received in the Dallas area, so it's going to be a treat for the fans in this particular I'm glad area. to hear you say that because it's carried... Uh, on, in the morning, what's uh, just a second? I've got to consult my notes here because uh, I know we're carrying it, but I don't know when we're carrying it. We're think, carrying uh, it six weekdays at six thirty a.m. Mm -hmm. You knew that. Yeah. Why didn't I ask you? I think I will. When is it carried on Channel Eleven? It's uh, six thirty uh, Monday through Friday, I think. Okay. Now we've gone through eighty-five episodes, mm -hmm. or in the process of mm -hmm. going through. Is there uh, something new on the horizon there? Oh yeah. There's um, sixty-five new episodes of Robotech uh, currently in production right now. It uh, follows the story, and that it's again an amplification of characters that have uh, been created in Robotech, and um, tells the story of their mission to space to deal with uh, a threat that they perceive as happening. It's um, the heroes of the first Robotech uh, saga, Rick Hunter and Lisa Hayes, and uh, their family as they try to uh, uh, approach uh, an understanding of intergalactic peace. So it's a real complicated show, but real interesting. Sounds great. Again, the show is weekdays at 6.30 here mm -hmm. on Channel mm -hmm. 11. The movie premieres July 25th uh, in a lot of theaters mm -hmm. throughout the Metroplex. And our guest today is Carl Masick, who is the producer of Robotech television series and the director and producer of Robotech the movie. And Carl, thank you very much for being with us. We appreciate it. And you're talking about intergalactic peace. Mm -hmm. It ties in very well with my next guest, who will be talking about the Peace Corps. Stay with us. Thank you, Carl.